I agree. All right, Satnam. Welcome, everybody. I'm very excited about sharing this class with you today because I started in this lifestyle in 1977, in August, and I took maybe two Kundalini Yoga classes or so, and um, it was a small ashram there that was run by uh, husband and wife, and, and, uh, and there's at the time, I guess, uh, probably six-year-old son. And they had a guest teacher come in, and uh, this teacher lived in Los Angeles, and he was very highly respected individual by Sabgur Lif Singh. And uh, I was encouraged to be sure to show up for morning sadhana for the week that he was going to be there. As you know here, it gets started pretty early in the morning, it's cold shower, the whole deal. And um, we're gonna, we'll do a little later, stand by, Sab, thanks. And so in those days, we didn't have a, an Aquarian sadhana. And it was a free form meditation portion of the, of the program. And this teacher taught a particular Kriya called Kayan Kalab Kriya. And um, I didn't know the name of it then. And um, he taught it every morning that week. And that's the reason that I'm here talking to you today. It's because of my experience from doing this meditation. Interestingly, after that week was over, I never did that meditation again. And then in 2018, all of a sudden, it, it hit me, and, and, it, and I'm like, wow, what was that meditation? Because I, I want to and I need to do that again. So I couldn't find it anywhere in the teachings, didn't know what to call it, didn't know when it was taught, didn't know much at all about it. So I just winged it with my memory and um, started practicing it. And it, it, um, when we first learned it, it was 30 minute, 31 minutes a day. And so I started doing it for 31 minutes a day. And if I couldn't get in that, I'd do 11 minutes or 22. And um, just kept doing it. Some days I'd miss. Wasn't, um, you know, I have a regular sadhana and practice that I do every day. Um, but this one is kind of like I do it most days at this point in time. So, and uh, it was wonderful, again. And I'll go into more details about that Kriya, but that's the reason that I'm very um, pleased and excited to share this technology with you. And I'll share a little story uh, about it in a, in a little while. First, um, I had some thought. How many of you are teachers here? Oh, wonderful, great, fantastic. Good to know that. So. Um, on the website, this Kriya was taught September 19th, 1977. And he taught us, uh, well, he intended to teach a second version the next evening, but it kind of got a little bit abbreviated. And um, it's called, uh, on, the, on the website, it, it listed as an intermediate Kriya. Um, and if, if you know anything about Yogi Bhajan, and I may refer to him as Sri Singh Saab, that's that this form his highest identity the way I refer to it he he didn't he didn't read any books he, you know he didn't bring notes to class he didn't uh, it was it was purely a stream of consciousness is what it was in fact there's one night if you ever have a chance to listen to it doesn't doesn't come across quite the same on the recording it was back in the um, mid to uh, I don't know, about 87 or 88. You might have seen the lectures called the, the Dungeon of the Rib Cage. The, the um, what is it, the, something of the Dungeon of the, um, something of the Dungeon of the Rib Cage. And he came to that class, and I sat pretty close, probably as far as you and me here, and, and um, he was in a trance state and just started speaking in a way that I'd never heard before. And um, it was phenomenal. And the, the lecture is, is about the identity of the soul. It's a really beautiful and incredible and powerful lecture. It's very poetic. And uh, I would encourage anybody um, to, to check it out. 
the um, something of the dungeon of the rib cage. I'll remember it. In any event, um, he's not the kind of teacher who read books and, and he, he taught from from his. It was a free flow of teaching. And I taught this class here last year, and I had a bunch of notes, and I was up pretty late last night making another bunch of notes. And finally, when it got to be about 12.30, I said, oh, the heck with this. <laughs> if I don't know it by now, then, <laughs> you know, screw it. So, um, you know, and, and for all of you that are teachers, one of the things to, the best way to teach anything is, is to know it and to teach it from your experience. Um, and always teach something that you know. Granted, sometimes the way you learn a thing is by teaching it and but practicing it is something that gives you a special insight into what it's all about and into uh, deeper aspects of it that are also something that may have never come out in a lecture. You know, it's one thing to read about what the Kriya does. It's another thing to have your own experience of what that Kriya does and to be able to share that firsthand because uh, that's the most relevant of all is, is what your own experience is. So I was in sales for a, a many, many years and at one point in the, at one point um, Yogi Bhajan taught a, a three-day sales course and one of the things that, that came out of the sales course is he said you have to want it badly Success. He's referring to success here. You have to want it badly and you have to sit quietly to receive it. And I was in a really challenging situation and it was, it was you know, hundreds of rejections before you might get a yes. I mean, not exaggerating. Well, probably a hundred. So, and you get to a point where you ask yourself, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know, this is like beating your head against the wall. But you know that there's there's a success there. You just need to, need to somehow find a place in yourself to let it happen. And that quote really resonated with me because what you have to, when we're on a spiritual path, we're essentially selling ourselves on an identity of who we want to be and who we are. And in order to do that, it requires a certain degree requires a tremendous degree of focus and concentration and it requires discipline obviously and, and, it, and it requires you have to want it if you don't want it it's not going to happen and you can go merrily along you know row 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 your boat along the way gently down the stream merrily 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 life is but a dream right and uh, you'll have a wonderful life and you'll have had a wonderful experience and you'll have had some great times practicing and teaching and sharing kundalini yoga yet ask yourself did i get what i wanted did i did i did i receive did i experience the very thing that inspired me to start out on this in the first place. And what is that thing? We could say it in different words for all of us, but ultimately we're looking to be relieved from these life, uh, you know, the neuroses. Duality is really, really the main thing. You know, we ha everything is a duality. The whole, you know, you, you have pol polarity, you got Everything is a polarization. Everything comes in twos in Maya, right? In the world. So there's the sun, there's the moon, you know, there's the earth, there's the sky, you know, name a hundred of them. They're all there, right? We know them black and white, you know, dark and light. It, it goes on and on and on. It's all, it's all opposites, right? It's a law of opposites. And the yogis, the yogis path is to bring a center to those pair of opposites because if it's maybe this or maybe that, then you're nowhere. You're in between. You're, you're just, again, merrily going down the stream and everything's great. And um, so, but it's not what your soul is really aiming to achieve, aiming to experience. Your soul is aiming to achieve liberation. The very first lecture yogi, Bhajan gave 
And if you haven't read it, you should read it. It's called The Liberated Man. Frankly, and he said this himself many times, and he, he's given examples of students who took one class with him and he met him 15 years later and he said, I'm still doing that and changed my life. And he's like, that's all, you know, you got the whole thing. You don't, you don't need 100 books, you don't need to read every lecture, you don't need anything but what Guru Nanak refers to, or what we refer to as Bij Mantra Sarv Kogyan Satanam. Does anybody know what that means? Bij Mantra. Bij Mantra, go ahead. Seed. Bij is the seed. In fact, in Japji Sab, many years ago when I was in college, someone in the interfaith community asked me, what is, what is the, uh, the golden rule? How, how is it stated in, in Sikhism? Because there's a, the golden rule is in all religions. You know, what you, what you sow, you reap. And that's the essence of it. Bij mantra is the seed mantra, Sarvkogyan. All the knowledge is contained in the seed mantra. And in Japji Sab, it's, uh, what, what is it? It's, um, um, anyhow, Bij is the seed. Bij is that seed that, that not only brought you here today, brought us here today, but Bij is the seed that started the whole thing. You know, Bij is the birth. You know, Bij is before your birth. Bij is who you are. It's the, it's the, it's the seedling of the tree. It's life itself, right? And there's, there's an evolution to that. There's, there's a trajectory. There's a destiny involved. And in that, there's you and you are it and if you can tune into that beach every day and have a discipline have a practice it doesn't whatever it is it could be as simple as is um it could be anything literally anything can take you to god one thought see that's really the trick of it all. And Yogi Bhajan taught this so many times in so many ways. He said, and he gave the example. He said, you know, I was, 16, I was 16 and a half years old and my teacher said, you're a master. You're the master. And his first thought was, it was a hesitation. Oh, how could that be? You know, it was a doubt. It was a duality. It was a question. And then immediately he said, no, that's duality. He recognized what that thought was, which was a challenge. And it was a doubt of the teacher's word. And he said to himself, take the teacher's word and own it. And he did. And you may love him, you may hate him. He said, you know, someone criticized him for having the biggest ego in the world. He said, yeah, I have the biggest ego on the planet and I blew it up so big that I wanted to share it with everybody. Wanted to share the guru with everybody. You know, so if you're going to have an ego, which we all do, what are you going to do with it? So, you know, his teacher said you're the master. He owned it. And he never looked back from that point in time. He went forward and he channeled what he channeled. And here we are experiencing that which came through him. He never wanted students. You've all heard that. Your teachers, you know that. He didn't come here asking for students. He came here to train teachers. So I became a teacher of Kundalini Yoga probably within a month and a half of taking my first class. You know, that's what it was like in those days. Get a book, get a manual, go teach. You know, you, you, did, the, you did, you know, basic spinal series, whatever it was, go and teach the set. And we did that. And uh, we learned in that process and we were able to share the technology with, with all kinds of people. So you have, you have that seed, which is your soul. It's, it's your soul's essence, right? It's calling you. Every moment, it's calling. In that very most incredibly faint, indiscernible voice. It's calling you to your higher consciousness. It's calling you to your true identity, to Satnam. And you need to nurture that seed, however you do it. I will say this from my experience. Be very careful in 
what he refers to as owning a gift, owning your gift. Whatever gift you may have, it's not yours. You may, you know, think you're some, you know, it, your ego starts to identify with the thing that makes you good or makes you great or makes you special. You're beautiful, you're this, you're what, whatever the case may be. You know, you're rich, you're, there's a, there's a million of them. And the worst one is the spiritual ego, as he defined. The worst is the spiritual ego because then you really think you're somebody, right? It's a trap. And you, you're, you're destined just to whatever, you know, um, good luck. Because, you know, again, maybe everything will look good on the outside, but in the inside, you never really, you never nurtured that seed. It, it requires humility. It requires a tremendous amount of reverence and uh, grace, of course, but, but humility and innocence. Keep your innocence. You know, whatever brought you here, whatever brought you on this path was something extraordinarily innocent. It was the purest, purest, purest part of you. And please stay in touch with that innocence and allow it to guide you in your life. Allow it to, to be who you are, but not with an ego. It's just to, you know, it, that's, that's what gives you liberation. That's, that's what allows you to excel, is to just let it come and know it's not you. So I'd like you to just take a moment with yourself. And it was interesting in a previous class, Sakirin taught this morning, she did the same thing. And just ask yourself, you know, you saw the dis class description. I'm guessing that might be part of what brought you here. Maybe you remember it, maybe you don't, it doesn't matter. But there was something, something that called you here. What was that? And I'd like to ask you please to just spend minute, two minutes, three minutes. Let's just spend a few minutes. Just go within yourself. Sit quietly. I don't care. Lie down. Stay in the same posture and it doesn't matter. Just be with yourself and tune in to what it is that causes you to be here. What's that? What's your soul calling? And in whatever way you can, ask yourself how you can dedicate yourself to serving that purpose. What, what can you do to be sure that you remember whatever that is and remember to bring it through to conclusion and success in this class and beyond?
Okay. You got it. All right. Come on back. Inhale. How many of you read, have read How to Know God, Pantajali's Sutras? One, two, three maybe, <laughs> partially. Okay, if you have notes, put that on your list. How to Know God. You know who Pantajali is? He's one of the, he wrote yoga aphorisms, yoga sutras. One of the greatest known yogis of all time. Um, and there, it's the science of yoga. It tells you how to achieve liberation. And if you read Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib, then you understand it. You know, the, the, a lot of Sikhs will question, well, there's nothing about yoga in Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. Well, that's true. It's just that the whole thing is about yoga. And it all depends on what you understand and what you define as yoga. Yoga is a union with your finite self with the infinite, right? So, if that's what yoga is, which it is, then the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib is a dissertation on that from start to finish. And if you ever have the opportunity, maybe you'll read the yoga aphorisms and you can read them backwards to forward and forwards to back. It's pretty amazing. One of the things that Pantajali refers to is the, the art of Dhyan. I'm going to give you a quote from Japji Sahib here in a minute. Dhyan is, a, is, is like... If I were to think of it, it's like a drone. It just keeps going, right? And it's a focused concentration that is unrelenting. It, it doesn't stop. That's one of the things that you're going to need in order to succeed at understanding and experiencing Sahaj but it's not complicated. It's very simple, and it's, it's so simple, you won't want to accept it. So, Guru Nanak, Sahaj, the word Sahaj refer, he uses the word 106 times in Guru Nanak's writings. It, it only happens once in Japji Sahib, and it's in the Sunniya Puris, the ninth Puri, and he says Sunniya, Lage Sahaj Dhyan. So the translation of that, as I would say, you know, as you can translate, there's a hundred ways to translate it, but in the simplest of terms, Sunya is a deep listening. Lage is when you attach yourself to something. Sahaj is, we all think of Sahaj as a, as a poise, an ease, a flow, a natural state of, 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 of being. Sahaj Dhyan is that concentrated. So when you're in, in a natural state of mm, you know, you can think of it as sound, you can think of it as, as, a, as, a, as a projection of light. It's just steady, it's quiet, it's low. It could be high, but the point is, is that it's just consistently constant. And that is a really challenge, it's one of the eight pillars of yoga, is Tehej, that Pantajali described, is, is Dhyan. And what you need in order to accomplish Sahaj is a level of Dhyan, as, is, as Guru Nanak says in Chapchi Sab. Sunye Lage Sahaj Dhyan. If you can deeply listen, and we'll come to what you're listening to in just a minute. If you can deeply listen, then you can achieve a state of natural focused concentration, which gives you Sahaj itself. It's one and the same. When you, when you achieve that, then you have that state of natural being. But what you have to do is you have to, as Guru Nanak is saying, you have to listen. Well, the question is, what are you going to listen to? That's, that's what you're going to ask yourself. That's what we're all going to ask ourselves. So, in this lecture that he taught, he talks about, as I quoted, Sahaj Yoga is a state of mind and being that becomes the one who practices Bhakti, Shakti, Raj Yogas. He says, and then you achieve Sahaj, and Sahaj gives you Dhyan. Okay? So, Bhakti, 
Bhakti yoga. Do you all do, do we know what? Does anybody know what bhakti yoga is? Devotion. Bhakti is devotion, right? And shakti. Shakti is power. It's energy. It's focused, intense. You know, strong. It's steel. Shakti energy, right? Um, and it's and and it's always not only in the in the traditional context it's always associated with the female energy shakti right in fact guru gobind sings he bowed every day and continuously to pritam bhagoti which is the adi shakti we say in the ardas the primal power bhagoti the 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 the, uh, the, ulti, the shakti and then there's raj yoga what is raj yoga Anybody? Royal. Royal. It's a yoga of the mind also, right? It's a yoga that, that gives you that dhyan and the gyan, well, which he's describing here comes after the sahaj, but you have raj yoga. Raj yoga is, a, is when you are working on your mind to a degree that you achieve that royal status. And who, who, who's your, who are your courtiers? Who are you ruling over? Huh? Mind? Yourself, your being, right? So you want to achieve a state of rulership over your own being, right? And that's Raj Yoga, so that you're a master of all of your elements, all of, all of the chakras, all of, all of what life gives you. You, you challenge them back. Lust, anger, pre greed, pride, attachment. These are what are the obstacles that are referred to in Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. So, are you, are you with me, following me so far? Yes. Okay. All right, great. Um, so, one of the things that Sri Singh Sahib says is that it's not, it's, it's bogus to think that you have to study all these studies and do all this hard work to make it happen. And he says this so many times in so many ways, but we don't want to own it. And what it is, is you, you need to accept the words. You, you need to accept what is given to you. Has anybody here read the book, The Surrender Experiment? Okay, it's a, it's a very interesting book. I, I had... I, I've probably had about five astrological readings in my life just for the fun of it, you know. And um, one time this astrologer, um, she said, you should read this book, because I had a tremendous amount of Saturn energy on me and some other stuff, and she was like, you're going to go through hell. She said, you got to read this book, The Surrender Experiment. And it's this guy who started taking some Hatha yoga classes and got into meditation. And he decided that he was going, you can look it up, I don't remember his name, I read the book like 10 years ago. And um, he decided um, after he had established a certain amount of a practice that he was gonna do two and a half hours of meditation every morning before the dawn. And he started this practice and things started to happen in his life. All of a sudden, you know, there's one person who's joining him every morning and then there's four or five and then there's a dozen people who are joining him for this, this sadhana practice. And out of this sadhana that he developed, he had this thought. And, it, and somewhere it came to him, he said, you know, you need to not say no to anything. You need to accept whatever comes to you. And so, if you read the book, it, it, it's really fascinating because it, it's so simple and, it, and it, it, this kind of thing would happen to any of us. You'd immediately, like as soon as you think that you're, that you're gonna not say no to anything, you can be guaranteed <laughs> within an hour, somebody's gonna <laughs> ask you something and you're gonna say, oh, blah, blah. you know? <laughs> you're not gonna know how to say no, but you are not gonna wanna say yes. So there you are, you know, and it's like, because your mind's gonna go, you know, I can't do that. And, you know, part of the teachings is that God's never going to give you something that you can't handle. But, you know, we don't trust ourselves enough. We don't trust our, our relationship with the infinite to really rely on that. So, you know, we create these boundaries. And 
So anyway, he just, he just opened himself and he's going to surrender to whatever came to him. And um, one thing led to the next. And um, next thing you know, he was living in a van when this all started, by the way. And he was a, he was a PhD student of sociology or anthropology or something. And um, so the first thing that happens is, you know, this group starts forming around him that wants to do the sadhana. And then the next thing that happens is um, they want to, and, and they're teaching yoga classes in the evening or, or something too, like every night or whatever. And then they decide they want to, oh, they were, they, were on, they were using somebody's space, but then that didn't become available. So they decided to, they, they should build a space. And sure enough, you know, he's like, uh, that was what, that was kind of more than like first things that you should build a yoga center. So yeah, build a yoga center. So he builds a yoga center. That's, that ends up happening. And then his professor asks him to do something, which I don't remember. And he's like, no, I can't do that because I was going to do this, this, and this after graduation, uh, after my PhD. And, and he's like, and, and he, because he had made this promise to himself, he said, okay, I'll do it. And then whatever that led to, it led to something else. And after about four or five of these, you know, major things that they took on and accepted he ends up forming a company that was called health scribe and i don't know if you have any of any of you have ever heard of it but it was like the first company that ever digitized medical records and you know became huge and he becomes this you know like millionaire uh, over the course of, of a short period of time and the story goes on from there but the moral of the story is that one thing that he made a decision that whatever came to him, he was not going to refuse it. He was going to accept it. He was going to surrender. And that was what the surrender experience was. What if I said yes? What if I said yes to everything that, that came to me? And, um, you know, we could always get ridiculous about these things. You know, the first thing my mind is thinking right now is, okay, you know, what if somebody asks you something stupid and ridiculous, you know? It's like that, that's not the point. The point is you, you know when you're being asked something that, that you need to say yes to. Anyhow, that's that. So what Yogi Bhajan describes is that we have a guru. Now, you can have any guru you want. Guru's just whatever brings you from darkness to light. We're Sikhs of the guru. Guru for us is Shabad Guru. It's the word that came through the Sikh Gurus. It's that, that imba is embodied in the City Guru Granth Sahib. We bow to that every day. We sing the music. We do all of that to, because we believe and we know from experience that when we chant these words and when we repeat these words, it, it opens up our consciousness. It changes our consciousness. And if you haven't done so yet, or if you don't even know about it, we're having a Sahaj pot here. There's Sahaj again. By the way, we have someone at the back of the room who's a long time, probably longer time yogi than me, Sahaj Singh. So I, ho I hope we're doing a good job, Sahaj. <laughs> but we're having a Sahaj pot, which is a way of saying we're going to do it relaxed and easy, a r full, complete reading of the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. Please sign up for one of the hours in those readings and see what you experience. I can't tell you what you'll experience. But I can tell you what many people have experienced. Somehow, somewhere in there, there's a very good chance that you're going to hear a voice that all of a sudden is like talking directly to you about something that only you know is going on in your life, and it's giving you a message about it. And um, it's really phenomenal, and that's why we call it the living, the living guru because it never changes, it's never altered, no, no man or, you know, I can't change the words, it's there, it's set. And it's, it's like this neutral space that, that is, is, is like, it's a force field unto itself because of the, the mass of its neutrality, It's <laughs> the way I put it. It's, it's so neutral, but some of the things may sound confrontational, it may sound pleasing, it may sound a hundred things, but all of a sudden that voice is going to come through and you're going to hear something and it's going to speak right to you. So it's a wonderful thing to experience and it's a wonderful thing to practice. And in the Guru, so 
If you're a yoga teacher, you may know that Yogi Bhajan said, there's one command in all of Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. Does anybody here know what that is? Jap. Meditate. Now, even though there's only one command, okay, so the Mul Mantra, right? The Mul Mantra is, is the beginning of the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. And it is said that the, the remainder, all the rest of the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib is an exposition. It's expounding on what is in the Mul Mantra. And we're going to chant the Mul Mantra as part of this meditation today, okay? And if you, when you go there to understand it in its depth, even, even if you only understand a little bit of it, but if you meditate on it, there's, there's several ways to re that, that you want to relate to mantra, okay? One is the speaking of it, right? Saying it, enunciating it clearly, and speaking it in the way that it's, that it's to be spoken. Another aspect of it is understanding the meaning of it, okay? And meditating on that meaning of it because it, it, that's a way to focus your mind, okay? And the third aspect of it is, is the resounding of that mantra is your own hearing of it is really what it is. And this is what happens when you're reading Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. At some point, you're hearing your own voice reading these, I'll call them foreign words, that are actually soul-speaking words. You're speaking to your soul, but you're the one saying it. So it's this incredible um, experience of, of um, it, it's very uncomfortable in a way, but when you, when you experience that, when you, Get in the zone of that and you can hear your own voice talking to your own voice your own self in those words then you're getting into a very high level of it because that's that's the essence of it it's it's not only saying it understanding what you're saying but it's also it resounding within you and you hearing it and experiencing it all at the same time and how does that happen it happens spontaneously which is another definition of, of sahaj spontaneity okay there's a book, by the way, that um, Lena, yeah, Lair, okay, I'll get that. She reminded me that last year I recommended this book, and I, if any of you want to understand Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib better, one of the best references is a book called, um, what is it called? The Guru Nanak Glossary. It's by C. Shackle and uh, S-H-A-K-E-L or L-E. And I think you can get it on Amazon. Anyway, um, if you want it, if you're the kind of person, which I am, I like to kind of like do my own um, translations. And so I like to look up the definitions of the words. You need to learn to read Gurmukhi, but you can learn that. You, it's, not, it's not rocket science. And uh, you can see the meanings of these words, and then you, when you read the sentence together, you can put your own meaning to it. Uh, rather than reading somebody else's translation, you can, another way of saying that is, you can understand what it means for you. you know, so that's, that's really what's at the heart of it. How, do, how does what, this word, what these words are saying resonate, and how do they relate to my life? Well, time is marching on, and um, I've said the word about five times, but um, I'm going to see here, who, there's one word that is the key to Sahaj. I've said it about, about five times here now, today. Um, can anybody think, imagine, or guess what it might be? Say? Close. Very close. I I'm looking for the word that Yogi Bhajan gave that's related to this lecture. So all these answers may be totally right, but they're not right yet. <laughs> Keep, Keep going. When I hear it, I'll let you know. I'll ring the bell. Nope. 
Say it loud so I can hear it. Huh? Starts with the first letter of the alphabet. Accept. Accept. And now, this is where the brutally difficult part of this comes in. Because our egos just don't want to accept the darn thing. You know, it doesn't matter who tells us, we're going to come up with a reason why not. It's just like what he described. My teacher said, you're a master, and the first thought is a hesitation. And that's where we all reside. We reside in that duality and that hesitation. He told a story that I relate to, it's not from this lecture, where he went to visit someone in the hospital who was really dying, and they were so pale that they looked like a corpse already. But he touched the person's hand, and the person opened their eyes, and the man said to him in as feeble a voice as possibly said, please say something to me. And the first thing that came to Sri Singh Sa's mind was, Anandabeya Merimai Satguru Me Paya. So we sing this every day. It's the first line of Anand Saab right after Song of the Khalsa. Ananda, Ananda Guru, say it for me. Satguru Me Paya. So, oh my mother, my mind is in bliss, for I have found the true Guru. And when he said this to this man, he said, it was unbelievable. You, the light just came onto his face immediately, just lit him up completely. And he says, we read Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib every day. We read Japji every day. We can hear the wisest masters in the planet every day. There's one spiritual master my wife tells me about all the time. He, says, he said to his class, who wants to be liberated? You know? Because I'll do it right now. You can be liberated right now. Right now. And you know what? No one was ready for it. Nobody. Nobody in the class was ready for it. It's fear, right? It's, it's the hundred things that stop us from accepting. So the whole purpose of having a guru and this is the thing that's really hard for Westerners. Like, why do you need a guru? Well, you consider it an intermediary. No, a guru's not an intermediary. What a guru is, is a, it's a messenger. Call it a coach. Um, call it a, um, a reminder. A guru's a messenger. It's a mailman. The way Sri Singh Sahib described himself, it's just a messenger, right? I can give you a message. Take it or leave it. Like it or don't like it. Doesn't matter. But here it is. So when you put something above you, all right, then you give that thing, as we do our guru, a certain, that's why we bow to it. It's, it's purely ritualistic, right? I mean, come on, we're bowing to a book. I mean, that's, that's what it is, right? No, it's not. Not for us. Not for you. Not for me. What I'm bowing to is, I'm bowing to a message that I got on that day that I first learned this Kriya. And my whole consciousness went like that. And I literally went to the farthest reaches of the universe and back. And it was better than any drug trip I'd ever experienced. And I wasn't a big druggie, but it was, it, it's what like I said it in the beginning. That's why I'm here today. And it's kept me here the whole time. Because thank God, and I bow to God that he's given me the grace and Guru to stay connected to that and just by, by Guru's grace only. Because, you know, we read about, if you're a teacher, you learn about the pods. You know, you learn about Shakti Pod. That's when you think you're it, baby. You've got it and you know you got it. And uh, everybody's going to tell you you've got it and to reaffirm it. And uh, boy, you are really in trouble then. And you go through it. And the thing is, the irony too is is that you may not even recognize it you know i would say for me it, it was is manifest in the form of a petty tyrant do you ever, ever read carlos castaneda you know what a petty tyrant is 
No? Petty tyrant is a person who appears in your life who by circumstances has a tremendous amount of power and control over you and you can't get out of it. And the worst part about it is not that they have the power and the control, but they use it in such a way that is so hurtful and so devastating that you want that it, that it wants to break your spirit, literally. It wants, it wants to break you. And it's, it's, it's without a question of a doubt, whether it knows it or not, in that person that a petty tyrant would be, it wants to crush you. And maybe it recognized, and it could be in the form of someone who's very good looking, you know, on the outside and very, you know, all everything appropriate, but just the way that they exercise that power and control is such that you know it and it hurts and they want you to hurt and um, how do you get out of that well of course you leave right but sometimes you may not be able to leave and that's Sri Singh Sab said if you ever get someone like that in your life it's the best blessing you can have because that person is going to make you grow like nothing else can make you grow because you can't escape it the only yeah well the, there is an escape the only escape is to find the place in you to survive it and to and to transcend it and that's what the first sutra be enlightened that the other human being is you what are the five sutras apply any one of them and they apply in that circumstance so um that's that. All right, please come sitting up. We'll do this for, uh, let's do it for 11 minutes. I think that'll be good. He says you can start 11 minutes, build it up to 22. By the way, if you want a copy of this, um, we have a, oh, I forgot to tell you this part of the story. So after 2018, um, when I started to practice this Kriya again, I started working uh, with Sikh Dharma and they have this book, Japji Saab. And it's a book that was written by Guru Tej Singh, and it was, uh, uh, it was composed, it's a lot of the teachings of Yogi Bhajan about Japji, and um, it talks about all the different potis and all their benefits, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really great and inspiring book. You might like to look at it. But the, the, the whole first section on the, mul, on, the, um, on the mul mantra is this Kriya. And I'll tell you right now, it's spelled wrong. The middle, it's called Kayan, Kayan, Kayan. Kaya is the body. Okay, but it's not the way Yogi Ji describes, it's not just the body, it's not the physical body, it's, the, it's your physical body, your mental body, it's your soul body, it's your aura, it's all your ten bodies really. So it's all of that. Kayan Kalab, K-A-L-A-B. And it's, it's written wrong, it's written Karab or K-A-R-A-B, but if you listen to the lecture, and it's only an audio lecture, you will hear him say several times Kalab. And that means transformation. And Kriya is, of course, the total um, practice and the total environment of that, of that um, transformation. So that's what this is. He says, you know, you can lose weight. There's all kinds of things. But one of the things that he describes is that it, it will completely, it has the ability to completely transform you. Okay? What does that mean? What does it look like? I don't have that answer. I can tell you for me what it looks like and what it feels like, but it won't mean much. I did want to do one more thing. Um, I guess we'll do it after. If you could bring that, that board back. Um, so he says sit straight in a meditative posture. It could be any, any mudra, okay? And um, I like to do buddhi mudra like this. And I've learned in the practice of this over the last few years, if you keep your thumbs straight, you know, a lot of times we put the thumbs out like this, you know, like this. But if you straighten the thumbs so they're like, uh, you don't have that bend, or they're, they're, they're parallel with the hands, then it causes all this to become a, a, a much better triangle. So it's really great. And it keeps your posture good. Um, and what we're going to do, now there's three ways you can do this Kriya. We're going to do it, um, we're going to do it the way I learned it. But uh, it's great for teaching, because uh, the first night he taught it, what you do is, you inhale deeply. The first thing you do, and let's do this right now. Just tune into God and think a positive thought. Just think something positive. 
All right, so you got that set, good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to inhale deeply and we're going to chant the Mool Mantra. And I'm not doing this to music because I'm doing it the way it was taught and the way I learned it, okay? I'll chant. And then what you're going to do, we're all going to chant together. And if, you, if the key isn't comfortable, change it. It doesn't matter. Just chant. We're going to chant Mool Mantra out in one breath. And then we're going to hold the breath out. Let the breath stay suspended. And chant the Mool Mantra mentally, okay? And then inhale and deeply and, and quickly so that you get a full breath in and then hold the breath in and chant the mantra mentally, inhaling and holding the breath, and then you're gonna do it out loud again, okay? I'll share with you the other ways you can do it, but for right now, that's, that's good, let's, let's get started. So, any mood, and the eyes can be any focus, whatever, um, whatever you like, Clo eyes closed, but it could be nine tenths closed, it could be eyes focused at, at the tip of the nose, be eyes focused at the third eye point, whatever you like. Okay, any questions? We good? All right, and I'll, I'll keep the rhythm going, okay? And I'm just setting a timer for us. Hmm. Okay, inhale deeply. Ekankar satanam karta puruk nirbhom nirver akal murat Ajuni sebang good prasad jap ad such jagad such hebi such nanak hosi be such satnam karta purk nirpa nirver akal murit ajuni sebang good prasad jap ad such jagad such hebi such nanak hosi be such in air. Three, four. Hold the breath. Satnam karta purak mentally. Nirbo nirver akala murat ajuni sabang good prasad jap ad such jugad such hebi such nanak hosi be such. Ready? Ekankar satnam karta purak nirbo nirver akala murat. Ajuni sebang good prasad chap ad such jugad such hebi such nanak o si be such Satnam karta purk nirba nirver kal murit ajuni sebang good prasad chap ad such jugad such hebi such Nanak hosi be such in air. Ekunkar satana karta purk nirbo nirver akal murat ajuni sabang good prasad jap ad such jugad such heavy such nanak hosi be such. Ekunkar satana karta purk. Nirpa nirver kalamulat ajuni sabang good prasad jap ad such jagad such hebi such nanak hosi be such satna karta puruk nirpa nirver kalamulat ajuni sabang good prasad jap Ad such jugad such hebi such nanak hosi be such in air. One creator the creation satanam durva no fear no anger undying form unborn good prasad jap meditate ad such true in beginning jugad such hebi such nanak hosi be such Ekankar satna karta puruk nirbha nirvir akal murat ajuni sabang good prasad jap ad such jagad such heavy such nanak hosi be such satna karta puruk nirbha nirvir akal murat 
Ajuni Sebang Gur Prasad Jap Ar Such Jagar Such Hebi Such Nanak Hosi Be Such Nail Ekam Karsanet Satnam Karta Purak Nirbo Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Sebang Gur Prasad Jap Ar Such Jagar Such Hebi Such Nanak Hosi be such Ekankar Satnam Karta Purak Nirbo Nirver Kal Murat Ajuni Sabang Gur Prasad Chap Ad such Jugad such Hebi such Nanak Hosi be such hold it out Purak Nirbo Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Seven Good Prasad Chap Ad Such Chikar Such Hebi Such Nanak Hosi Be Such Nil Ekankar Silent Nam Karta Puruk Nirvo Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Seven Good Prasad Chap Ad such, jagad such, hebi such, nanak ho si bi such, ekankar satana karta purak, nirva nirver akal murat, ajuni seven, good prasad chap, ad such, jagad such, hebi such, nanak ho si bi such, hold out. Satnam Karta Purak Nirbo Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Seven Good Prasad Jap Ad Such Gunchen Such Heavy Such Nanak Hosi Be Such Follow Me Inhale Out Loud Ekon Kar Satnam Karta Purak Nirbo Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Sabang good prasad chap ad such god such heavy such nanak ho si be such hold it out Ekankar satna karta purak nirpo nirver akal murat ajuni sabang good prasad chap ad such god such heavy such nanak ho si be such in hell out loud, Ekankar Satanam Karta Puruk Nirpo Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Seven Good Prasad Jap Ad Such Jukad Such Heavy Such Nanak Hosi Be Such Hold it out Ekankar Satanam Karta Puruk Nirpo Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Sabang Good Prasad Jap Ad Such Jagad Such Hebi Such Nanak Hosi Be Such In Hell Ekankar Out Loud Satanam Karta Purak Nirpa Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Sabang Good Prasad Jap Ad Such Jagad Such Hebi such, nanak ho si bi such, hold it out. Satna karta purak, nirpa nirver akal murat, ajuni sabang gur prasad chap, ad such, jagad such, hebi such, nanak ho si bi such, inhale, keep your mind focused. Ekankar out loud, satna karta purak, Nirpa Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Sabam Gud Prasad Chap Ad Such Jagad Such Hebi Such Nanak Hosi Be Such Hold It Out Three Minutes and Change Nirpa Nirver Akal Murat Ajuni Sabam Gud Prasad Chap Ad Such Jagad Such Ebi such, nanak ho si bi such, inhale. 
Ekankar Satanam Kartapurk Nirbo Nirver Kalmudet Ajuni Sevam Kur Prasad Chap Ad such Chukad such Ebi such Nanako Sibi such Satanam Kartapurk Nirbo Nirver Kalmudet Ajuni Sevam Prasad chap ad such chikad such heavy such nanak hosi be such in hell ekankar satanam karta puruk nirpo nirvera kal murat ajuni seven prasad chap ad such chikad such heavy such nanak hosi be such hold it out Satnam Karta Purk Nirbha Nirvera Kal Murat Ajuni Sevam Kud Prasad Chap Ad Sach Chukad Sach Hebi Sach Nanak Hosi Bhi Sach Niam Kar Satnam that breath out. Satnam Karta Purk Nirpa Nirver Kal Murat Ajuni Seven Good Prasad Jap Har Sach Chukar Sach Hebi Sach Nanak Hosi Bhi Sach Nail Go Be such Nanak Hosi be such an hell. Inhale deeply. Stretch up. We're done. Inhale. Deep, deep, shake them out. Okay, exhale powerfully. Inhale deeply. And now let your whole body shake. Let your arms shake your whole body. Toe to the top of the head. Exhale. And inhale deeply. Come on, bring it all in, all the breath, all the breath, and circulate all that energy throughout every ounce of your being. And let it go. Why do? Okay, you did great. Now that's really challenging, isn't it? Yes. Okay, that's why I changed it. So, but I, the first time I learned it, I did, I did it the way we started. But the first time he taught it at class, you just do it the way we ended. And you can do it in a class where you have one group start and another group come in. So it's kind of like call and answer. Um, so that was kind of fun if you, if you try that. Um, one thing about this, that um, he shared was that somehow he heard about this Kriya. There's a special story that goes along with this, kind of interesting. And um, he went to his teacher, and his teacher said, oh, you need to find so-and-so because they're the masters of this Kriya. They're the ones who mastered it, this person, one person, this man. So anyway, um, doesn't matter, but so, I don't know the details because he doesn't go into the details, but he says it took him six months to find this person, right? And finally, when he finds this person, the guy says to him, he says, so who told you to come and see me about this? And he says, you know, my teacher, Santji. And he says, well, that's who I learned it from. Why did he send you to me? <laughs> and he says, because you're the one who, who knows it better than anybody else. So, um, I will just tell you that 
Um, you know, I've been doing this, as I said, um, mostly like 31 minutes a day, but then about, I don't know, six months, nine months ago, I got, you know, I realized that I needed, I wanted to do this more. And so it says to build it up to 31 minutes and you can start with the two cycles, right? Then you can do the three cycles and another version of this, which he alluded to in his first class, he says, we're gonna, we're gonna do this tomorrow night, but he never ended up getting to it, was four cycles. And this is, and I'm, I, please know that I'm not, saying this to brag, I'm trying to share where you can go with this, okay? And ultimately, it leads to a one-minute breath. So what you do is, it takes about 15 seconds to recite the Mul Mantra out loud, right? It takes about 15 seconds to recite it again. Inhale long, slow, and deep. This is the fourth cycle, if you do it four, with four cycles. Long, slow, and deep to the Mul Mantra. And ironically, that's the hardest part for me anyway. Is, uh, what ends up happening is I, I take in too much breath long before the mantra is over, but then I sip in a few more breaths, you know, at the very end and, and manage to keep it going. And then, and then it goes to the out loud part. And by the time you're done with that, it's about, it's about, um, it's a one minute breath, and it's essentially. And when I'm done with this, I feel like I've been to the spa, you know, I mean, and, and not to mention other things that are going on. Uh, I, I, um, and I'm not going to go into all that, but, but I've, I've, I've gotten to a point where I'm pretty consistently, not on a regular basis, uh, especially challenging with the schedule here, but where I'm doing it two hours a day, a morning in, an hour in the morning, an hour at night. And I, because I found myself confronted with some really challenging, difficult circumstances in my life, and I felt that I really needed a, a, a degree of meditation that was going to help me sustain myself through this and it certainly has done so and um, one of the things that I've learned from it that I'd, I'd be happy to share is that it has it has helped me become much tremendously much less reactive you know and we find ourselves whether internally or externally or both reacting to circumstances and, and events things people say things people do it could be the littlest stupidest thing in the world and you're reacting to it you know it could be something that's really hurtful and really harmful that somebody does and you're reacting to it but every time you react and he sent me a letter once on this he said you're lowering yourself to that vibration that the person that that is com was coming from the other person don't lower yourself to that don't react but it's easier said than done you know so you need to find that space in there where and this is where I want to conclude whatever comes to you in your life good or bad accept it because that is the key to Sahaj that's that's my understanding of what he's getting at here so it's just one word, acceptance. What, is, what are you accepting? You're accepting everything. It's just like the, the guy in the surrender experiment. It doesn't matter what. And, and the meditation that I tried to get you to tune into in the beginning, to focus on it, why I asked you to decide what you wanted to accomplish out of this, is because you are gonna find, the mind is fickle. The mind constantly forgets. You'll forget before you walked out of here, you know, most of us, you know, why we even came to this class. You're on the lunch and somebody and, you know, it's everything. So, but whatever that seed is, if you want to really nurture that seed and grow it into this amazing, you know, Bodhi tree, then you've got to give it a tremendous amount of nourishment. And that means that you have to develop a concentration of recognizing the most subtle circumstances in your life where, where you're being called to accept. No matter what it is, no matter how it presents, you know, it's you take it in, you don't own it, but you, you, you flow with it. That's, how, that's the whole science of Tai Chi. You know, you take it in and you move it just goes that's acceptance you don't resist a single thing in Tai Chi and you practice a technique called pushing hands it's the same 
It's the same concept, but it's totally mental here. Totally mental. And that's Raj Yoga. And that brings you Sahaj. And that gives you all the knowledge of the universe. Bij Mantra, Sarva Kogyan, Satanam. All the knowledge of the universe is found in that one mantra, Satanam. <laughs>